All right, so now we're going to start with Mr. Robert Allen. Um, um, Rob, um, uh, the main thing to understand here is that he has a system. And one of the things that uh, if you don't have his big binders, the, the whole um, the package that we talked about, somebody won yesterday. Who won the package yesterday? Raise your hands, somebody. Congratulations. Give her a hand. Let's do that. Um, and uh, so he's going to go through that. And if you just follow what he's teaching, I'm telling you, you will become extremely wealthy. Just do what he's saying, and it'll become very wealthy. And I'm a living proof of that. Let's bring Robert G. Allen on the stage. Life is good, isn't it? Life is good. See you guys back here in the general section? You know where you need to be. You need to be up here. <laughs> so life is good, isn't it? Now, I love the way Sunil runs the, the, this. What he's trying to do is change people's lives. You guys up here in this section, have you felt like he really likes to change your life? He wants to help you? Have you, how many of you feel like he's really on your team? He really wants to help you. And so, you know, you need to give him a hand because he is amazing. Yeah. You know, just because, you know, he, he brings me here and we're friends, why would I want to say that? Well, just notice what he did today. He's, he's brought you up on the stage. He said, here's, here's an opportunity to stretch. I want you to stretch. And, and did you watch him stretch today? Yes. You know, some people are terrified to do that. Terrified. And yet, he said, just come on up. I want you to have a bigger life. And most people's lives are pretty shrunk. You know, they sh fear shrinks people. And therefore, we end up in this box of uh, our comfort zone. And we get comfortable inside that zone. And if you don't stretch outside that zone, all you ever get is a very shrunken life. Sunil, I, you know, I've just been amazed at what you've been doing here this last couple of days. I'm just honored to be part of it. Because this is, this is a biggie. This is a biggie, guys. He's on his way to, to take, take, he steps in big, big shoes and he's filling them. And I am so honored to know, to know you, Sunil. Thank you. You're awesome. You're welcome. You're incredible. You know, just look, look at this. You, know? you, you, want, you want a bigger life, so you have to push against the, the comfort zone. It means you're going to be uncomfortable. If you're, not, if, if you're not stretching, if you're not uncomfortable, you're not, you're not doing it well. You have to be stretching and pushing. Because everything you've ever wanted is outside your comfort zone. Everything you've ever wanted is outside your comfort zone. So you have, to, you have to say, well, I'm going to go out and get it. I'm going to be uncomfortable. I'm going to look like a fool a lot of the times. And yet you slowly get better. So when, when we talk about real estate, it's just a metaphor. In real estate is just a metaphor for doing something hard. So you stretch yourself outside and become a better person. <coughs> Become the, the uh, 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 is there greatness in you? Yes. Is, yes. Or is that in other people but not in you? Is there greatness in you? Yes. Yes. Touch yourself at the heart level. So there's greatness in here. There's greatness in here. What do you mean by great? Well, great would be to, to, to grow to a, to a better person, but to do things that make the world a better place. So real estate, this once again, it's just, it's just a, it's just a, um, an opportunity to see whether you can do something bigger and stretch yourself. So, Sunil, for organizing this incredible event, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you for coming. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Imagine 10 years from now. Maybe you'll have an event like this where you'll transform other people's lives. Imagine your ideal lifestyle. You always have to keep that constantly in your mind. What do I want life to be? How good do I want it to be? What about my health? What about my relationships? What about the money? So we we'll use as, the, as real estate the, a way in which we can go create some wealth. But you're an entrepreneur. There'll be all kinds of ways you'll be creating wealth. All these booths you see out here, all kinds of ways of people stretching, figuring out a way that they can find a service, a product, some information they can market so that they can create some, a, a business and then they can make the world a better place. So bring up my PowerPoint, if you would, please. When we talk about creative real estate, it's the way in which I want you to be looking at real estate through, through creative glasses. Yesterday, we talked about the 10 uh, people that are playing in this game called our real estate game. So the property itself can, can be part of the uh, part of the process. You know, if I walk through a piece of real estate, I want to say, what can I split off in, to this particular project so that I can make some extra money? So, um, so I, I want you to be, as you're walking through a piece of real estate, you're going to examine and, and sense what kind of flexibility could be sold. Could I sell some of the furniture that's in a, a furnished house? Could I, could I take this apartment building? One friend of mine bought an apartment, about 30 in an apartment building. It was filled with all these old furniture. You know, it's a lot of been painted over. And he realized that there was, this was all antique furniture. It was, you know, it had been there for many years, but it was beautiful. So he had it all taken out, pulled all the furniture out of it, stripped it all down, and sold it for tens of thousands of dollars. And it was that antique furniture that provided a lot of the money for him to be able to buy the property in the first place. In other words, he, he used some of the assets that were in it in order to be able to buy the property uh, from the very beginning. So splitting off the furniture, or splitting off the property itself. Um, I, we, we did a, a challenge uh, in, the, in the United States. I said, Let's, we, we wanna, we, we're challenged to see how many millionaires we had actually created. And there are thousands of them around the United States. And so Fox News challenged us to invite 101 of them to come on television. So on national TV, on Fox Business News Channel, number one news, news channel, we had 101 millionaires show up. And on national TV, they, they were blitzed with phone calls about how did we do this. And every one of these people, some of them made in real estate, some of them making the stock market. And when we announced that we were going on national TV about 30 days before, maybe 45 days before, we were in Los Angeles and we announced, if there's anybody in the audience who's made a million dollars and you want to go on television with us, please come on, you know, come on, come on, uh, you know, uh, apply. And so there was somebody sitting in that audience who wanted to be on that show but was not a millionaire. And she came home to her husband and she said, we're going to make a million dollars in the next... 45 days. And uh, he said, what? You know, she said, quit your job. We need, we need to work at this full time for 45 days. <laughs> so, I did not know this story until I show up in New York and we got all these people there and we're having a wonderful time and we're on this bus going to some, some function somewhere. And uh, she's sitting uh, on the bus next to me. And she said, uh, do, you, do you know why I'm here? And I said, no. She said, I had to make a million dollars so I could be on this TV show with you. I said, no, not, no, not really. And she said, well, yes. And so I started 45 days ago. And I'm looking for properties that have special, you know, special advantages. I called my mom in Seattle. I said, Mom, you need to help me. We need to make a million dollars in 45 days. And so... Her mother said, well, I have this realtor friend, you know, and so they were, you know, she was just starting from scratch. It was crazy. And so she finds this property that, uh, that is in a, in a subdivision, and the, the, it's a house on a fairly large lot. And uh, the realtor says, I have a good feeling about this one. I don't know why, but I kind of have a good feeling that this is probably going to be a good deal. So they started to do some, some uh, you know, research on this one property, and the, in a 
in a neighborhood where they had uh, five acre lots and houses and on each of one of the five acre lots. And the, uh, the, the realtor does some little research and finds out that this actually was, the house was sitting on one side of this big lot and then there was this big vacant part over on the other side and it looked like a five acre lot. But what it had really been done was that it had, before they had made the, um, the, the zoning to into five acre lots, it had actually been zoned for a two and a half acre uh, two two and a half acre lots, and they had made this. They had made an application, and it, and the application had been approved, but they hadn't paid the fee. And so, so like this, is like like in 1972 or some so like a couple of many decades ago, and this property had had actually been rezoned, and all they needed to do was pay the fee. I don't. It's a crazy story, but this is what happened. So they pay the fee. So they now have a, they have two uh, two lots in a five acre zoning area, and this one vacant lot in the middle of all this is sold to a builder. This vacant this two and a half acre vacant piece next to the one the two and a half acres with the house on it, they they split it now. When she buys this property, she has not one property but two. She has the house and the one two and a half acre piece and the five acre property, or two and a half acre property that's free and clear. Basically, she sells that one piece for $500,000. And nobody really would have known that that would have happened if they, if they hadn't done just a little bit extra research and then the realtor had this little special feeling. So that was, that was one of the properties and she made a half a million dollars on one property. <laughs> Then she had the, you know, a long story of two or three other properties that she was able to buy. She was sitting there in, next to me on that bus as she's telling me this story, and she's so excited. Well, the reason I'm telling you this story is that when you look at a piece of property, you always have to double check, is there another way that a part of this could be split off somehow? So that if I could split it off and sell that, that I could end up making some money from that sale, and maybe in the process of the closing, in a double closing, I could sell that piece, make profit from that, use that profit to be able to buy the other piece and use it as the down payment. Do you make, does that make sense to you? For, for example, let me, let me show you here. So um, uh, this is a, a little single family home. It's on, the, on a busy street. There's a side street here, there's a side street there. And I, I, I see that there's a, 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 an advantage to this one property because it has a very deep back lot. And the back lot is all covered with weeds. The, land, the, 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 the lawn goes up to right about there. And then in the very back, it's just total jungle, you know? It's just a messy lot. It would be nice to have a very deep lot like that. But I said to myself, what if could we split off that back lot and use the sale of that to raise the down payment to be able to buy the front part. So I, that may be a little difficult to maybe understand what I'm trying to say. I, I, what I, I said to myself, what if this neighbor or that neighbor wanted to buy that piece of ground so they could have a deep lot? What if, what if A or B, what if I went to them and said, listen, I tell you what, I'm going to put my lot line right there and then I'm going to refinance this. And it's going to make that back part free and clear. And when it's free and clear, I'll sell it to you. You give me 10 grand for this back chunk of back lot. And so the neighbor said, yeah, I would love to buy your back lot, you know. So obviously I, I still don't own this property, but I'm making an offer to buy this property. And I, in order to buy it, I have to refinance it. I have to get a new mortgage. So I went to the city and I said, I want, to, to re, I want you to re, uh, give a different uh, land description. I wanna, I'm actually going to split this off. I'm going to sell this back part here. So I had to get it rezoned. And it took me you know, two or three weeks to go through the city and get the city to give me approval so that I could have this back lot rezoned um, and re, re, resurveyed. I had to get it resurveyed. 
So the city finally gave me a, the approval to do that, and now I had to go to the bank and to borrow money, but borrow money on a smaller piece of ground, right? This, this, this used to be this big piece, but I want to only mortgage this piece right there. I want to put a mortgage on that front port, okay? So this, I went to the bank and I said, this is the house, you can see the house, for the collateral for the loan, you're going to. This is the description of the land that I want you to 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 appraise. So I had to get an appraisal on a smaller piece of ground and refinance. Got a brand new loan, and there was enough, you know, to the, the and the bank was ag agreed to that because it was a, a a nice property, a good house in a in a decent sized lot. These lots were all very similar. See, it's just that this, for whatever reason, they, the the way they put this uh, this uh, subdivision together, it's just this one house that had a very deep lot. So now I, I get the bank to refinance a smaller piece. Therefore, this back piece ends up being free and clear. It has no mortgage on it. Now, since I now own it, it's mine, free and clear, with no mortgage, I can go to A right here, or actually I did it with B, 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 I now deed you this new, you know, free and clear piece of ground, you give me a $10,000 check, and, and so, in a sense, I didn't put any money into this process, uh, it was all done simultaneously. The 10000 was generated from, from selling that land to the, to the neighbor, and I ended up with a property, a smaller property, uh, with, with the down payment paid for the mortgage all done. And it was because I, I, I could see there was a larger piece of property that could be split off somehow. Now, it was, everything had to come together just perfectly. But it was, there, were, there was a few moments in there I thought I wouldn't be able to pull it off. But this is a, an example of a nothing down deal. See how that's nothing down? Uh, the down payment came from the sale of that back piece of property. And I used that down payment for the mortgage. The mortgage ended up with that down payment, and I ended up with a property the, with a mortgage of $10,000 less than, um, than, than uh, well, as a down payment of $10,000. So I made $10,000, and I had a property that I could say that I bought with nothing down. You know, sometimes you just jump through some hoops, and what I'm trying to open up your mind to is, is the property itself sometimes carries in it the seed to the nothing down transaction you want to do. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Everybody kind of catch that, what we, have, what we did here?